Good morning, everybody. Pastor John here from New Life Church in Ilwaco, Washington. And this is the message for Sunday, October 22nd, 2023. But to start today, we're not going to be talking about October 22nd, 2023. We're going to be talking about the summer of 1998. Oh, yeah. Long time ago. Summer of 1998, where I could be found spending most of the summer at Tyndall Air Force Base uh, near Panama City, Florida. I was attending a lovely summer camp for misguided college students, actually called Air Force ROTC Field Training. Air Force ROTC Field Training is uh, the basic military training for officer cadets, and ROTC cadets from all over the country uh, come to one of these encampments. Mine just happened to be at Tyndall Air Force Base during the summer of 1998. Now, field training is not particularly fun for most sane individuals, and uh, as I consider myself to be a mostly sane individual, I didn't enjoy most aspects of field training. There were a couple of enjoyable parts. I, uh, I personally enjoyed the leadership reaction course. I personally enjoyed the confidence course. A couple of those things to me were uh, fun. I like the team building. I like the challenges. Uh, but near the end of our time together was not something that I particularly enjoyed, but it was something that I think I enjoyed more than most other people. It was a simulated deployment exercise called Operation Rigor at the time. And the way it works is they wake you up in the middle of the night. You have to grab all your gear. You have to get ready to move out, get into, uh, get into formation as a, as a flight or as a, a squadron and, and be able to move and, and to do so quickly with all of your gear and, and have everything you need. So we wake up in the middle of the night, we grab our gear, uh, we get in formation, and then we march this altogether unacceptable and uncomfortable distance with our backpacks, all of our gear through the swamps of North Florida. And eventually, hours and hours later, we arrived at our destination. It was a tent city, or at least the components of a tent city, that we then had to finish putting together. We had to raise the tents, we had to build sand, we had to put together sandbags, we had to uh, dig foxholes, uh, things like this, because it was part of what we were doing. Uh, you see, we were given some information once we arrived that we were going to be attacked by an enemy. Now, in this case, the enemy was the security forces from Tyndall Air Force Base. They were going to come and attack us later. They weren't allowed to attack us until after 1700 or 5 o'clock p.m., and that we should prepare our defenses accordingly. We knew that they were coming, and we knew that it was going to be after a certain time, but we didn't know exactly when. So I did three really important things before we got started. First, I went and used the porta potty. Second, I got something to eat. I had one of my MREs. And uh, uh, then I, uh, I went and took a nap. I encouraged other people in my flight to do the same thing, especially take a nap, but they were too excited. They were, they were looking forward with anticipation to this attack that was going to come. There was an anxiety, not necessarily fear, but an uncertainty. And they were looking forward to this and they just couldn't sleep. And so they started chatting. And a few of them did go to the porta potty and a few of them did eat. But I kept hearing them discuss things like, what do you think it'll be like? Uh, how long do you think it'll be before they get here? Um, and since I didn't have answers to those questions, I went to sleep and I got me a really good nap in. And I woke up a, a few hours before the pending attack. We got our stuff together. We, we got all, uh, we got ready. And in 1700, came and went. And so we took turns manning the defenses. And then around 2100 or 9 o'clock p.m., the real attack came. It started with Juliet Squadron on the opposite side of our encampment uh, getting picked off. 
because several of them decided at nine o'clock it was a really good time to go and use the porta potty. They all got together in a line, walked into a well lit area, and they were just standing there. And they made really good targets for the security forces and their paintball guns. And they got picked off one by one because they were just standing there out in the open. A few of the security forces guys then tried to infiltrate the base through the opposite side where Echo Squadron and uh, the Foxtrot uh, Squadron were waiting on them. That was the mistake because we not only repelled their attack, we actually caught one of them. An EPW or enemy prisoner of war. We had him. The reason that we were successful though is because we had a ringer. You see, one of the guys in my flight was a prior service guy. He had been enlisted in the Air Force before, and he served in security forces. He had actually attacked these type of encampments before. He knew what to expect. He had a really good idea where they were going to come from. He knew their tactics. He knew what they were going to do. And he even said, they're probably going to attack one side of the base to get everybody to respond to that. And then the real attack comes from the other side. So when the initial attack came against Chula yet, that was just a probe. And we were ready. We stayed put. And when they came sneaking through the woods, we were ready for them. And we not only repelled their attack, but like I said, we even caught one of them. Now, eventually the battle was over and a ceasefire uh, went into effect. We still had our EPW. We didn't know what to do with him, so we, uh, we put him in a safe place in the middle of our encampment. But now we had a new assignment. We had to appoint a sentry that could stay awake on a watchtower for an extended period of time until daylight came. Now, the list of volunteers was very, very few. In fact, there were none because everybody else was exhausted. They'd been up for over 24 hours. Well, everybody that I knew except one guy. You remember that nap? Well, I figured that I could handle the first watch and everyone else went to sleep. I was prepared and did what needed to be done. I kept watch for a few hours while some other people got some sleep. And then eventually I was permitted to go and wake up someone else to take over the sentry position. And with the new sentry in place, I found my corner that I had started my nap in several hours ago, and I slept until breakfast. Cool story, Pastor, but what does that have to do with anything? Well, for that, we go to Matthew chapter 25, and we start in verse 1. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten bridesmaids, who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. The five who were foolish didn't take enough olive oil for their lamps, but the other five were wise enough to take along extra oil. When the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. Pay attention. They all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, they were roused by the shout, Look, the bridegroom is coming! Come out and meet him! All the bridesmaids got up and prepared their lamps. Then the five foolish ones asked the others, Please give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. But the others replied, We don't have enough for all of us. Go to a shop and buy some for yourselves. But while they were gone to buy oil, the bridegroom came. Then those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was locked. Later, when the other five bridesmaids returned, they stood outside calling, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he called back, believe me, I don't know you. So you too must keep watch, for you do not know the day or the hour of my return. You have to keep watch. Jesus is coming. Over and over, Jesus tells us of his pending return. Throughout scripture, there are prophecies upon prophecies that talk about Jesus going to prepare a place for us and then coming back and getting his bride, coming back to get the church, coming back to get those who have put their faith in him. But let's look a little closer at this parable. In the story, there are ten bridesmaids 
Now, five of them are considered foolish, and five of them are considered wise. And you, you see them in these in these assignments. So you've got five who are foolish, five who are wise. They were all assigned the same job, the same responsibility, to welcome the bridegroom when he got there. Now five of them brought extra oil and five of them didn't. And that's the only distinguishing factor between what makes them wise and foolish, is that five of them were prepared. They were prepared for any possibility. So they took extra oil. It's kind of like my daddy loves to say, it's better to have what you don't need than to not have what you do. So they made sure they were ready by taking extra oil. I don't know why they thought they might need it. I don't know what would have prepared them for the possibility that the bridegroom might be late. Scripture doesn't say, Jesus didn't tell us in the story, nothing like that. It just simply says that these five wise bridesmaids were prepared. And that's ultimately what separates all of us, is whether we are prepared for the return of the bridegroom or not. Making sure that you're ready, no matter how long it takes. You see, for a long time, for a long time, Believers have been waiting for Jesus to return. Pretty much ever since he ascended into heaven in Acts chapter 1, we as believers have been waiting for him to return the same way, to come and get us. And it's been a while, hasn't it? So some people have even started to wonder if Jesus is even coming back. Let's be honest. Most of us have dozed off. Most of us have fallen asleep. We're just like the girls in the story. We got tired of waiting. We decided to take a nap. Listen, it's okay to catch a nap before the main event gets started. It worked out okay for, all, for the uh, bridesmaids, including the five wise ones. They were able to get a nap in. I think, though, that what we need to do now is wake up. You see, remember there was a call in the story. The bridegroom is coming. And it was at that point that they gathered themselves together, they got their extra oil, they lit their lamps, and they were ready for the return of the bridegroom. They were ready for him to come in. What I'm telling you, church, is you need to make a trip to the porta potty. You need to grab your MRD, and you need to make sure that you're ready for the bridegroom's return. Oh, wait a minute, Pastor, you're mixing your stories up now. No, I'm not. It's the same story. Will you be ready or not? You see, the girls in Jesus' story, they had to make sure they had enough oil. They needed to be sure that they had eaten and slept and taken care of business and that they were ready to fight. Because at any moment, Jesus could show up. You see, Jesus expects us to have a relationship with him and to be living in obedience to his will. That's our job. It's our responsibility, whether he comes back tomorrow or whether he comes back in the lifetime of our great-grandchildren. But what we have to do is be prepared for his return. In the story, though, Jesus said, You too must keep watch, for you do not know the day or the hour of my return. They simply just had to be ready when the call came out. You see, Jesus is coming back for people who are watching for him, who are looking for him. Remember in my story uh, that my flight had a ringer? We had a guy who knew what to expect. We had a guy who knew the ins and outs. He knew how the attack would come. And I think we were so well prepared that that's what allowed us to capture an EPW. That was really cool. But it's like G.I. Joe used to tell us all the time. Knowing is half the battle. Well, Jesus didn't exactly leave us unprepared. He told us that there would be signs. In Mark 13, verse 28, Jesus said, Now learn a lesson from the fig tree. When its branches bud and its leaves begin to sprout, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see all these things taking place, you can know that his return is very near, right at the door. 
I tell you the truth, this generation will not pass from the scene before all these things take place. Heaven and earth will disappear, but my words will never disappear. However, no one knows the day or hour when these things will happen, not even the angels of heaven or the Son himself. Only the Father knows. And since you don't know when that time will come, be on guard. Stay alert. The coming of the Son of Man can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. When he left home, he gave each of his slaves instructions about the work that they were to do. And he told the gatekeeper to watch for his return. You too must keep watch, for you don't know when the master of the household will return. In the evening, at midnight, before dawn, or at daybreak. Don't let him find you sleeping when he arrives without warning. I say to you what I say to everyone. Watch for him. In verse 29, Jesus said there would be signs leading up to his return. He talks about branches on a fig tree. Well, take a look outside. The colors are starting to change. It's gray and wet and dark. In Washington, that means that fall is here. And soon, it's going to be winter. And where we live, that means it's going to be grayer and darker and wetter. And we're probably not going to get any snow. But that's what we've come to expect because that's how the seasons flow. What Jesus is telling us is that there will be signs. And if you study scripture, you'll also hear Jesus say things like he did in Matthew 24, verse 3. Later, Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives. His disciples came to him privately and said, Tell us, when will all this happen? What sign will signal your return at the end of the world? Jesus told them, Don't let anyone mislead you. For many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah. They will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and threats of wars. But don't panic. Yes, these things must take place, but the end won't follow immediately. Nation will go to war against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in many parts of the world. But all this is only the first of the birth pains with more to come. Then you will be arrested, persecuted, and killed. You will be hated all over the world because you are my followers. And many will turn away from me and betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and will deceive many people. Sin will be rampant everywhere, and the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved, and the good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world so that all nations will hear it, and then the end will come. Wars, rumors of wars, famine, earthquakes, and rampant sin, the love of many growing cold, persecution of believers. Based on what I'm reading, you better wake up, church, and you better make sure that you're prepared because he's coming back for people who are watching for him. It's time to keep watch. Let's pray. Father, we are so grateful for your word. There's not just really good stuff about how we should live our life, but there's also so much that tells us of this promise that you are coming to get us. Thank you for making that possible. Thank you for having a plan that includes us having an opportunity for an eternity with you. Thank you that you always keep your word. Lord, help us be ready. Help us keep watch. Help us be like the wise girls, to have what we need, to be prepared, to be watchful for your return, to be ready when it happens so that we don't get left behind, but instead we are ready to go with you, excited about your return and looking forward to an eternity with you. Lord, if there's anyone who hears this message and realizes that they're not ready, that they're not prepared, that you will right now speak to their heart, Holy Spirit, and let them know that what they clearly need is Jesus. Holy Spirit, I ask that you convict them to the point that they put their faith and their trust in Jesus and him alone, that they begin to live a life in service to him according to your will for their life.
not our own. That we will live in obedience to you and be prepared for the coming kingdom. That's my prayer, Father, that all of us will follow you, will be prepared, and will keep watch. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks for joining us today. Hope you'll be back with us next week.